fair and flee, so no one pursues you. But the right. Everybody say Sadiq. Sadiq in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, the word righteous means Sadiq. We have a God by the name of Jehovah or Yahweh Sikadi, meaning God is my righteousness. Sadiq, the righteous, or as bold, bold as a lion. Now watch this. I, I, I want you to put this on for me, right? Like I said, I want you to put it on for me. I have two different, different displays. Two different displays that I want you to listen to. Somebody say the wicked man, wicked man. and the righteous man. They put to the wicked man first. Let's see what the wicked man does. And he follows the crowd. And this is what it sounds like with the wicked man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, no. Oh, go to the go to the wicked man first. The first thing that I can that's the Jesus.
Proverbs chapter 21, verse 29. Mm -mm. Now, we just talked about the wicked and the righteous. But this right here says that a wicked man, he does what? Good God. Good God. Good God. The wicked man puts up a bold front, but an upright man gives thought to his ways. Amen. A wicked man puts up a bold front. What does that mean, to put up a bold front? That means he's bluffing. He's bluffing. What does bluff mean? It means a false display of confidence. A false display of confidence. When I was younger, listen to me. When I was younger, one of the movies we used to watch was Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And there was this young girl by the name of Dorothy, and she was down that brick. She was down the yellow brick road, wasn't she, Ralph? She was down the yellow brick road, and, and she comes in contact with some friends. Hallelujah. She comes in contact with a scarecrow, and this scarecrow ain't had no what? Brain. He ain't had no brain. He ain't had no brain. He ain't had no heavy. Oh, Lord, have you ever been around some scarecrows? <laughs> 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 then she comes in contact. Then she comes in contact with a tin man. Yeah. No <laughs> the tin man ain't had no what? Oh, he ain't had no what? Have you ever been around some heartless individuals? Yeah. My God in heaven. Let's preach, Lord. Let's preach, Lord. Let's Stay preach, Lord. Stay Let's preach, Lord. And then, and, then, and, then, and then she comes in contact with what else, you guys? Y'all help me. She comes in contact with a lion. Yeah, no and this lion, this, this lion, he ought to have an innate ability, a natural ability to automatically be able to go back. Yeah, yeah. But he lacked something, you guys. Courage. He lacked courage. He lacked courage. He lacked courage. So as soon as he see a bump in the night, he jumping. He put a bug, put a bug. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as he see, as soon as he sees the bump in the night, as soon as he sees, he sees things going. But then as soon as something rises up at him, uh, he tuck his tail and he running. Have you ever been that cowardly lion? Amen. Have you ever been that tin man? Have you ever been that scarecrow? Jesus help us. See, what is courage? Courage is the ability to do something that frightens you. It's not the absence of fear. <laughs> It just means that I that I that I allow my that I allow my spirit man to override my fear. Because the emotion of it is gonna be there. The emotion of it is gonna be there. But I have to allow myself to say, you know what? I'm standing up to this situation because I already know that the Father has went before me. And if he goes before me, no man can stand against me. See, he told Joshua in Joshua chapter one, verse nine, I have commanded you. Yeah. To be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yeah. He's with you wherever you go. Yeah. Every step you take, the Father is by your side. And do you know that linking yourself up with people that are fearful, you'll become fearful. Yeah. Yeah. Linking yourself up with people who are brainless, you'll become brainless. Yeah. <laughs> linking yourself up with people who are heartless, you'll find yourself being heartless and callous. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Yes, Stay with it. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Everybody say, I needed this. I needed this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Go there in the message translation for me. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm bold as a lion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. In the message translation. If any of you are embarrassed over me and the way I'm leading you when you get around your fickle and unfocused friends. Jesus. Help us, Lord. Know that. You'll be an even greater embarrassment to the Son of Man when he arrives in all the, let's go to the next, splendor of God, his Father with an army of the holy angels. Yeah. Stay with oh, him. so you embarrassed now. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, oh, so you're shy. You don't want to spread the love of God right now. Do you know that shyness is fear in disguise? Oh, my, my child, that's okay, baby. See, look, it's okay when you three. 
But when you're 35 and you still diagnosed as a shyness, you need to get past that. If God is speaking of it, the Bible says he was not ashamed to call us brethren. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. Is this making sense to y'all? He's not ashamed to call us his brethren, so why in the world should we be ashamed to call him our brethren? You gonna put on a show around, listen to me, you gonna put on a show in front of your fickle and unfocused friends. You gonna put on a show in front of them? See, this life is brief. This life is temporal. This life is fading away briefly, just like that, instantaneously. But when you stand before the Father, it's going to be eternal. Amen. There's no end to it. So I would rather, I would rather be unpopular here than be popular in, in, in the presence of God. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Yes, sir. Raise your hand if you ever met some fickle and unfocused people. Nobody. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now watch this. Raise your hand if you are the fickle and unfocused individual. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. See, we, uh -huh, we ain't no fun with a rabbit got to come with. I can point five of them out to you, Jesus. Come <laughs> on, uh -uh, what about you? What about me? What about us? Amen. Don't worry about the speck in your brother's eye when you got a log in yours. Yeah. Right. Stay with it. Stay with it. Matthew 7, verse 3. Is this making sense to you? One thing that you have to understand about that log that's in your brother's eye, it takes a bunch of specks to make up the log. Yeah. So they got a speck, but you got an entire log because of all of those specks that are there. Yeah. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Stay with it. Stay with it. Go back. Go back. I just want to be messy and read it again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen at you. I'm here. I'm here real good. God, oh, I miss you. If any of you are embarrassed over me and the way I'm leading you, when you get around your what? Say that with me, you guys. Fickle and what? Know that you will be even greater. There be uh, you will be e an even greater embarrassment to the Son of Man when He arrives in all of His splendor, fickle and unfocused. See, the Bible says, "I'm not ashamed of the gospel, Amen. for it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First for the Jew, Amen. then for the Gentile." Amen. Romans chapter one verse sixteen. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I, was, uh, I remember. I remember when uh, Tommy first started learning how to drive. Oh my God! Oh my God! She's standing up, man. She's standing up. She's standing up. She first, she first started learning how to drive. I'm walking around, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like, Lord have mercy. She's like, Mama, I don't want you to. I don't want you, Mama, because you, you yell too much. You yell, oh my Lord, Dad, you can't scare me. I won't see nothing to teach me. I'm saying to myself, Lord, you don't want me to teach you, because I'm scared out of my mind. I get you behind the car. I let her drive my car. I let her, I let her drive my car. I let her drive my car. At this time, we stand in the apartment. Time to drive. She does a fairly decent job. That ain't good when you're on the road. You got to do a great job. Yeah, for real. You're not just driving for you. You're driving for everybody that's around you. Good. I'm telling you, I'm teaching her up. I'm teaching her up. And she does a fairly decent job. She gets home. As soon as she gets home, I'm like, all right, time to be like the last one. You put your blinker on. Good, girl. Good, good, good. I said, all right, now you got to watch this little pothole. Watch this little dip. Because we're going to go down this dip. We're going to come up, and then we're going to come into the drive uh, driveway. She comes to the driveway. As soon as she come out the dip, I said, now take your time and ease off of it when you come out the dip. She didn't ease off of it when she came out the dip. She accelerated. Oh, Jesus. And as soon as she accelerated, boom, she jumped the curve. She jumped the curve, and that girl was looking face to face with my window. <laughs> the window of my house and said, oh, Shandaba. <laughs> so, so, so what ended up happening, what ended up happening was Tommy, Shawana standing outside, she said, what? She said, you so calm, why you ain't saying nothing? It's going to scare all of us. <laughs> no, no, I said, I said, Tommy, I said, Tommy, I said, Tommy, I said, all right, take your foot, take your foot off. I said, turn the car off. To make sure it's important and everything like that. And she said, said, okay. So she gets out. And as soon as she get out, I, I let them outside because I didn't want them to see me sweat. I went in the house and said, Oh Lord Jesus, I'm scared. I'm hungry. <laughs> see, that didn't deny, I ain't denying the emotion. But in front of them, yeah. I had to be bold as a lie. <laughs> I had to be bold. But I got that house in the way and I was scared. My mind thought I was gonna throw up. Stay with it. And guess what? I bet you she ain't drawing my car no more. <laughs> That's a lesson for you. Stay with Hallelujah. It. Hallelujah. 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 
Boy, y'all are cutting up this morning. Y'all did that. Tommy, everybody say, Tommy, jump the curve. Y'all point at now. Y'all don't point at me. Don't point at me. Good God. Good God. Everybody go to Proverbs chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Let's start at verse 32. Go there in the message translation for me. Oh, you can't stop her now. She thinks she, she thinks she a professional. She thinks she'll get out there with you now, right on that road. I don't know. No, she can't. You can't stop her now, man. She, she got burgers and phones and worshiping. I'm like, now look, now you better keep your hand on that steering wheel. Uh, let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 32, in the message translation. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 32. Hallelujah. Let's go there in the message translation. <laughs> We're going to read read a couple of them. Proverbs 30, verse 32. If you're dumb, everybody say dumb. Yeah. Now listen to me. And there, there is a difference between being bold and boneheaded. Yeah. Hear me? Yeah. Hear me? There is a difference between being dumb or being bold and being boneheaded. If you're dumb enough to call attention to yourself by offending people and making what kind of gestures? Rude, Rude gestures. gestures. Let's go to the next verse. Don't be surprised if someone does what, you guys? <laughs> Everybody say the Bible says that. Churn milk turns into butter. Round emotions turn into fight. Fist fights. Now, one thing that you have to understand about this is now, am I standing here condoning any type of fight? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm not condoning this. But this is one thing that you have to understand. If you're an individual that's in the spirit and supposed to be in the spirit, Satan will look for any opportunity to defile not your name, but God's name in you. He will look for any other. The Bible says those that are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8 verse 8. There's no way that you can please the Father if you're in the flesh, if you're in your emotions. If you're dealing with an individual that is not spiritual minded and they always see things from the lens of carnality, you have to take them back to the spirit. You have to take them back to the spirit because they're not going to understand the spiritual things. They're going to automatically know how to get into the flesh. That's right. That's why it never said, it never said spirit. It said emotions. We got to stay outside of our emotions. Is it okay to have emotions? Absolutely. Yes, you have emotions. You're just not led by them. Amen. Don't be surprised if someone blames your nose. Go back to 32. For real. If you don't know. So call attention to yourself by offending people and making rude gestures. And one of the ways that you can offend people is by being too religious. Yeah. Yeah, see that, that see and that all y'all finna go to hell. <laughs> like, wait a minute, where's the God of love at? Hold on real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you better turn the burn. <laughs> like you throwing all these different things out there, and these people are like, man, I don't want that Jesus. I don't want that God because you're not leading them back to the place where they need to be. See, 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 now watch this, watch this, watch this. I thought about some stuff. I thought about some stuff. Now in my in my generation. Everybody say rude gestures. Rude. In my generation, we got some rude gestures. Yeah. Now, now it's not verbal. It's not, it's not verbal communication. Mm-hmm. It's all kind of different gestures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that right there means you're trying, you trying to get out there. You're trying to do something. Watch it. Watch. What's up? <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Break it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> if you ever crunch that line, yeah. Stay with it. Stay with it. Everybody say rude gestures. Caleb yes. come home the other day, and I said, now, you ain't learned that from me. You must have been around him. You must have been around him. Good at school. He's like, mm. <laughs> I said, boy, if you don't get your neck right. <laughs> I said, where you learn that? He said, the girls. I said, uh-huh. I said, yeah. I said, you, I said, you be playing with everybody. Y'all playing with everybody. I play with everybody. So I said, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's my, that's my guy. I said, but I be watching the little, I be watching the little gestures. Shawana told him the other day. Shawana told him the other day. She said, uh, son, it's time for you to go in there and, and, and go in there and get ready for school. I not, re- I not ready for school. <laughs> um. <laughs> so they in there, they, I'm hearing all kind of stuff. And Shawana come in there breathing. You ain't hit us. I said, what you ain't hit us? She said, that boy just jumped on me and everything. <laughs> so I walked in 
walked in there. I walked in there. I walked in there. And all I did was just look at her. Dada, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> <laughs> all I had to do was give them that. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, it wasn't verbal communication. I just made a gesture. Mm -hmm. A gesture. Did this make sense to y'all? Yes, Stay with it. Hallelujah. Everybody say, watch the gestures. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Y'all know y'all done did that. Y'all never be like that. Y'all do a little something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Y'all. <laughs> Three o'clock. <laughs> y'all tough. Boy, y'all tough. Y'all tough. Yeah. Is that down y'all street? Yeah. Yeah, I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. Now watch this. I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Now watch this. Let's do it. Let's do it. And watch this. You can say what you mean and mean what you say, but not be mean while you're saying it. You hear me? You can say what you mean and mean what you say, but not be mean while you're saying it. It's the motive. It's the intent of your heart when you're releasing something. See, you can you can automatically tell somebody, I love you. I mean, okay. I love you. I mean, you're trying to get that person. To, I said I love you. God, leave. <laughs> now, which one of them I love you are you going to accept? Right. Probably the first one because it was said with gentleness. You make sure that the motive behind what you're saying is right. You can say the right thing and it be wrong with the wrong motive. Right, right, right. Is this making sense? You can say what you mean and mean what you say and not be mean while you're saying it. Oh, y'all getting taught this morning. Yeah, right. stay with it. <laughs> so we say with confidence, with boldness, the Lord is my help. Hallelujah. I will not be afraid. Amen. What can man do to me? Hallelujah. Amen. What can man do? Do to me. We would say that. Watch this. Have you ever heard somebody say that the Bible says that God helps those who help themselves? Right hand. Have you ever heard somebody say that before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. And y'all give me a scripture back and I give you five dollars. Not that I can't, can't give you no more than that. I give you five dollars. You ain't gonna be able to find it. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God helps those who need help. Yeah. The Bible says in Psalms 46, verse 1, that he's an ever-present help in time of trouble. Amen. That's his word. God doesn't help those who need help. I mean, uh, uh, help help those who help themselves. He helps those who need help. Yeah. If you're in need of it, the Father is there to provide the aid. He's there to provide the assistance for you. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Amen. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. <coughs> I will not be afraid. What can man, what can man do to me? This is one of the number one things that stop us from attaining our boldness because we so focus on what man is going to do. Yeah. We're so focused on that, that people pleasing. We're so focusing on family members. We're so focusing on that friend. We're so focusing on that boyfriend or that girlfriend. We focusing so much on what their response is going to be. And what that is, is that's a lack of identity. Jesus. We mask these things and don't realize that we're dealing with branches instead of dealing with the root. Come on, Pastor Tisha. And any time you deal with the branch, eventually it's going to grow back again. I gotta go back to the root cause of this thing. Where is this people pleasing coming from? Where is this fear coming from? I gotta get down to the root. I gotta get down to the nitty of this stuff. I am the vine, you are the branches. Amen. <laughs> if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, verse 5. Watch this. The vine produces the fruit, but the branch carries the fruit. We're called to carry the fruit, we're called to bear the fruit. But Amen. Jesus is the one who produces it. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go to, let's go to, glory to your name, Lord. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. y'all getting the word this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Blessed are those who are what, you guys? Persecuted. Persecuted because of what? Because of righteousness. 
for theirs is what? Is the kingdom of heaven. Now, there's a lot of people that are being persecuted, but, it, but it's not because of this. They're being persecuted because, because of their wickedness. Amen. They're being persecuted because of their gossip. You put yourself in this situation and expect God to get you out of it. David said in Psalm 39, verse 1, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. God, I love your word. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's go to the next verse. Blessed are you when people, do what you guys? Insult you persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of who? Yeah. Everybody touch yourself and say, I can't take it personal. Can't take it personal. Stop taking it so personal. This is why you people pleasing because you're taking everything so personal. Stop taking it personal because the enemy is not trying to discredit you. He's trying to discredit the God that's in you. It's just making sense to y'all. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. Rejoice! And be glad because great is your reward in where? Uh -huh. Great is your reward at work. Great is that plaque you get that's going to say employee of the month. Great is your reward. Great is your reward in front of all of these different people. No, uh -uh. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Matthew chapter 6 verse 1. It never told me not to practice my righteousness. But if I'm practicing my righteousness to be seen by other individuals, that's the only reward I'm going to get. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now watch this. You will be persecuted for walking in boldness. By walking in boldness, it's going to bring about persecution. So be prepared for it. Everybody say I have to be prepared for it. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. I'll never forget when I first started preaching. And I, I'm preaching the word of God. Everybody say the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says preach the word. Yeah. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Yeah. 2 Timothy 4, 2. I'm preaching the word. I'm giving it my heart. And in the middle of me preaching, I see a whole row of people get up and walk out. Yeah. Been there. Rev, I see a whole slew of people get up and walk out while I'm preaching the word. I'm preaching my heart out almost until I had tears in my eyes. Been there, done that. And I watched my wife in the back of the room. I watched my wife in the back of the room. The more they walked, the more she got up and said, come on, wife. You can do this. Get up and do it. Let's go, she go. I hear you. Praise God. Bless his name. Hallelujah. And that's all I needed right there. That was the joke that I needed to keep moving. And the Bible says, don't be afraid of men in their faces. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8, meaning don't be afraid of their appearance. Yeah. Because you will see some things that's disfiguring. You will see all kinds of stuff that's taking place. But you can't be afraid of them. You have to cry loud and spare not. Yes, sir. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Yes, sir. Stay with it. Is this making sense to y'all? Been there. Woo! 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 Y'all just praise God real quick. Just praise God in the church. Praise God in the church. And his glory. And his glory. And his glory. And his honor. Boldness that comes 
from you walking in righteousness, being in right alignment or in right standing with the government or the, the government of heaven. Being right alignment and right standing with the fellow with the government of heaven. Righteousness. Everybody say righteousness. Righteousness, righteousness is justification. <laughs> justification means not just as if I never did it. The Bible says in Psalms 103, verse 12, he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Stay with it. Hallelujah. 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 Proverbs 19, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Proverbs 19, verse 2. Hallelujah. Of the story of this man. The story of this man who, uh, who was a spirit-filled individual with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He was the only one in his family, and everybody ridiculed him. Everybody talked crazy about him. Everybody say true story. Everybody talked crazy about him. And they were like, man, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with all of that, man. Like, we we not used to all of that. And he's like, look, man, everything that I'm doing, I can take you and give you Bible on it. I'm not doing any, anything outside of the word of God. The Bible says do not go beyond what is written. First Corinthians 4, verse 6. So he's at home one day, man. He's a devout Christian. He's at home one day working on his vehicle. And before you know it, the vehicle falls on him. The vehicle falls on him, and he's paralyzed on one, in one of his arms. They end up taking him to the hospital. All of his family members come around, and, 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 and they and they weeping. They, they crying and stuff like that. And so he uses the other hand to call his pastor. He ends up calling his pastor, and when he calls his pastor, his pastor comes down immediately. He comes down, lays hands on him. The Bible says you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Lays hands on him. And in front of everybody that was in there, the pastor looks at them, and he looks at him. He said, check yourself out. He said, God just told me to be healing you right now. Amen. Amen. He said, hold on real quick. So the pastor gets up and he leaves. This is his pastor. This is not a traditional pastor. This is, this is his pastor. This is the one who received, who, who's received the Holy Spirit. And he believes every single thing that's in this word. Paul said, I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Acts 20, verse 27. I have not hesitated. So, so, so the guy gets up. He checks himself out. And one of his family members, he heard one of his family members. This boy, this boy went stone crazy. This boy went stone crazy and lost his entire mind. <coughs> three days later, everybody say three days later. Three, three, days, days, later. three days later, they went to the man's house. He back under the car. <laughs> Working on it. Because it took that type of boldness. It took that type of audacious faith to say, you know what? I don't care what the doctor is saying. Yes, I go to them. But at the end of the day, whose report will you believe? It is making sense to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not good to have zeal without knowledge, nor to be hasty and miss the way. Zeal without knowledge is not good. A person who moves too quickly may go the wrong way, yep. is what this scripture is saying. A person who moves too quickly may go the wrong way. Now, you can have boldness. You can have strength. You can have zeal. What is zeal? Zeal is enthusiasm. I'm fired up. But too much of this with not enough of this, and you'll find yourself being led astray. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who are very zealous, but they have no knowledge. Don't lose your zeal, but increase in your knowledge. Yeah. Is this making sense to you? Yeah. Keep the passion. Keep the passion. Keep the boldness. Keep that vigor and that vitality. Yeah. Remain vigilant. You need those things. But make sure that you're increasing in knowledge. Yeah. There's a story of this woman who was radically saved, and she was on fire for the Lord. On fire for the Lord. Everybody she came in contact with. Everybody say true story. True. Everybody she came in contact with. She loving on the people. Bringing souls in. And one day. Because she didn't have accountability. One day. She said you know what. I'm going to go to this witch coven. I'm going to go to this witch's coven. And I'm going to get these people saved. She's a babe in Christ. 
So she ends up going over there, and as soon as she goes over there, she starts to tell him about Jesus. And before you know it, when she went over, she never came out. Because it was enough of them on the inside of her to persuade her mind to fall back into that darkness. Because she didn't have accountability. And like I said before, there is a difference between being bold and boneheaded. You have to have wisdom. You have to have discretion. Is this making sense to y'all? Are y'all getting fed this morning? Oh, God, you're faithful. Oh, God, you're faithful. Mm. Now, watch this. I want you, I want you to go to, I'm going to get ready to wrap it up here, man, because we got we to pray. We got to pray. Uh, you don't even have to go here. You don't even have to go here. This is what I'm going to do. Everybody say fear. Fear. fear, 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 fear. The Bible says in Luke 21, verse 26, that in the last days, men's hearts will fail them for fear. Huh. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. Do you know that people will literally have heart attacks mm -hmm. yep. because of fear, because of the spirit of fear? Wow. Now watch this, watch this. Fear, 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 fear. According to the American Heart Association, approximately every 40 seconds, an American will have a heart attack. About 647,000 people die each year. Fear, the number one thing that fear does, fear weakens the immune system yep. and causes cardiovascular damage. And watch this, and the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> you believe in God, believe also in me, John 14, yep. verse 1. Watch this. Number two, it leaves you with stomach ulcers. This is why he told Timothy to drink a little wine for your stomach's sake in 1 Timothy 5, verse 23. Yeah. Because he had stomach ulcers. What happened was Timothy would go out and he would proclaim the word of God. He would be bold as the apostle that was underneath Paul. And he would see members that he had worshipped to, worship with. And he had seen members that he had cultivated be outside, burned to death. Used as lampstands, used as candles. They put them inside of shirts with, with shirts with wax on them, real, real hard, and stiffen them up. And they were inside of Nero's garden. Yep. Is this making sense to you? That's what they used to do. They used to make sport of Christians back then in those days. Yep. And that's where you get the word Roman candle from. Yep. We think about, watch this, we think about the Roman candle as a firecracker. Right. The Roman candle was a person. Yep. All of that took place back in Rome. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Watch this. Number three. Everybody say number three. It leads to accelerated aging and even premature death. The Bible says in Psalms 90 verse 12, teach us how to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Have you ever seen somebody, and it's no pun intended, I'm so serious. Have you seen somebody, you walk up to them and ask them how old they are. They look like, watch this, they look like they 95 and they only 23. Because of the heart, because of the fear, and because of things that have been instilled on the inside of them. They're walking around with all of this excess baggage on them. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1, that wisdom brightens a man's face and changes his heart appearance. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Wisdom brightens a man's face and changes his heart appearance. Can you really and truly say that since you've gotten with Christ, you look years younger? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the truth. You look years, when you stay, when you stay steadfast and you're committed to your walk with Christ, he'll start shaving all those demons off of you. Amen. They will see a glow and they will see a radiance on your life. Raise your hand if you can attest to that. I know I can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, because I was an ugly duck with <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all laugh too hard now. Stay <laughs> with it. God think I'm cute. That's all that matters. Get y'all. I'm just playing. Hallelujah. Number four. Everybody say number four. It causes brain damage. It even causes memory loss, you guys. Fear does all of this to you. The spirit of fear does this to you. The Bible says that the thoughts of the righteous are right. In Proverbs 12, verse 5. Memory loss. Remember that. Have you always said, man, golly, I, man, what, what, man, what? I was finna say something, but golly. Yeah, don't let the enemy come in and take that from you. Don't let him come in and mess with you with that situation. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 7 says that the memory of the righteous is blessed. 
The memory of the righteous is blessed. Anytime you feel forgetful, uh, my memory is blessed in Jesus' name. Yeah. My memory is blessed in Jesus' name. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah. The memory of the righteous is blessed. Hallelujah. Number five, you will experience extreme fatigueness and exhaustion. There will always be an unsettling in your, in your spirit. You can't even go to sleep at night because it got you tossing and turning. This is fear. It's tantalizing. It will grip you. Woo! Is this blessing y'all this morning? Y'all are getting taught this morning, man. Y'all are getting taught this morning. Y'all are getting taught this morning. Well, watch this. Watch this. Fear is the strong man. And what are the spirits that are underneath fear? The number one spirit that's under it is torment. And the Bible says that fear brings torment. First, uh, first John 4 verse 18. The second one is terror. The third one is nightmares. Number four is timidity. Number five is worry. And number six is all phobias. We just talk about fear, 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 but we don't know what comes underneath them. All of that is attached to the spirit of fear. All six of those. Well, you know what? it's not even six of them because all phobias are underneath them. Is this making sense to y'all? I'm going to end on this one right here. I had a... Uh, I have a very, 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 uh, very close man of God, man, who, who, who's near and dear to my heart, man. I, uh, man, I, I, I love the wisdom that's that's upon his life, man. And he, uh, he gave me a, he gave me, he gave me a, um, a, a, a talk once before, and he told me, he said, I remember the day when the spirit of fear entered into my life. I remember the exact day. He said because my mom was trying to get me to go to a funeral, and I didn't want to go. So they forced me to go to the funeral. And as soon as they forced me to go to the funeral, I looked upon a dead body and the spirit of fear entered into me that day. Wow. The spirit of fear entered on the inside of me and I knew it. I knew it. And from that day on, I lived my life in terror. I lived my life in fear. See, I can give you Bible showing you that you have to give your children knowledge on even what they're looking at. Yep. I don't take my child to no, no funerals. Because he doesn't understand it yet. Yeah. This is for somebody, y'all. This is for somebody. You don't realize what that type of stuff will do to an individual. Genesis chapter 50, verse 7. Genesis chapter 50, verse 7. Wow. 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 Everybody said we're going there. Genesis chapter 50, verse 7. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Genesis chapter 50, verse 7. Thank you, Lord. So Joseph, he went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the, the dignitaries of his court, and all the dignitaries of Egypt. Let's go to the next verse. Besides all the members of Joseph's household and his brothers and those belonging to his father's household, only, everybody say only, only, only their children and their flocks and herds were left where? They were left in Goshen. Now, one thing that you have to understand in Goshen, Goshen is a place of provision, protection, and blessing. It just said right there, verse 7 going to verse 8, that they, they went up. Him and everybody went up to go and bury his father, but he left his children back. He didn't take them with him. Is this making sense to y'all? Now, watch this. You better be mindful when you do go certain places of who you leave your child with. Man, look, man, look, man, look. He left them in Goshen. Goshen is a place of provision, protection, and blessing. You make sure that you're leaving them with individuals that are like-minded, just like you. You can't be over here talking about apples and they talking about oranges. You can't be over here trying to guard them and protect their heart, and these people got them opened up to any and everything. And before you know it, when you come back, you leave that child in a worse state than it was when you left them. Now you got to cast up out your baby. Don't let your child be taken care of by just anybody. Amen. Don't you, don't look. Oh, y'all hear me when I tell y'all this this morning. Y'all praise God if y'all got something from that word. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Everybody stand with me if you possibly can. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Let's pray for social media. No, you don't. No, you don't. Let's flow. Let's flow. Uh, let's flow. Let's flow.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put that on for me. Y'all praise God here if y'all got something from that word. Yeah. If there's anybody here that has not accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, you're saying, you know what, I, I received, turn it down real quick, I received that word that has went forth this morning. But in all actuality, if something tragic or drastic was to occur in my life, I don't know if I will make it to heaven or not. We want to give you that opportunity this morning. At salvation, you're coming from out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son he loves. The Bible says giving thanks to the father who has rescued us and brought us into the dominion of his light. Now watch this. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says that he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loved. You come from out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So if that is you and you're saying today I want to make the decision to, to ask Jesus into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to come from out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son he loves. I want you to slip your hands in the air. It's not about the person to your right or to your left. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And there may be somebody here that's saying, you know what? I've accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. But in all actuality, I have not been living the way that I'm supposed to. And Father, I want to get my life back right with you. See, the Bible says, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. In Psalms 51 verse 12. So if you know that the joy of the Lord has been missing in your life and you want to rededicate, you want to reestablish the covenant that the Father has set in place, I want you to slip your hand in the air so that we can pray for you this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Not focusing on a person to your right or to your left. If that's you and you want to recommit your life, I want you to lift your hands in the air so I can pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I got hands going up. I got hands going up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Father. I want you guys to repeat this after me. Say, Lord, Lord thank you thank for welcoming me back into your kingdom. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Say, Satan, I renounce you. I will have nothing more to do with your kingdom. I'm a blood washed and a blood bought child of the living God. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Now this next call. This next call. If you feel as though, if you feel as though the spirit of fear has been gripping you and is stopping you, is preventing you, is driving a wedge between you and your relationship with the Father, it is it is hindering you from walking in the boldness that you know you can be. And it's become a distraction in your life. If that is you, I want you to come down to this altar as we pray. Come down to the altar as the Father moves upon your heart. Turn that on for me. Everybody worshiping. Everybody worshiping. Everybody worshiping with me. Yeah, turn it up for me. Turn it up for me. Somebody hit those lights for me. Hit those lights for me. Hit those lights for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move on you, man. Come on, come on. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Yeah, yeah. Worship, 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 worship. Andele bo korandele basia ta. Hey, Turn it up for me, turn it up for me. Ah, ah, I get it, I get it. Stop, stop right there. Do me a favor, put it on, let it go. I'm letting go, I'm letting go, I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm letting go.
I'm letting go. I'm letting go. You know what? That's everybody. <laughs> if God is moving on your heart and you need surrender, you want to just come to the altar. Come to the altar and kneel down before the king. Kneel down before the king. That's what he's saying right now. Just kneel down before the king. If there's a place in your heart, yeah, there it is. There it is. Yup, yup, yup. There it is. There it is. There it is right there. There it is. <laughs> he's trying to break this stuff off of you this morning. He's trying to break it off of you this morning. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Letting it go. Letting it go. Letting it go. Letting it go. Hallelujah. 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 One touch, Father. One touch. Here and through the airways, Father. That's all they need. Touch your people, Father. Break it from off of their minds. Break it from off of their bodies. Break it from off of their lives. Spirit of the living God, move. We give you full access. We give you full permission to be the consuming fire that you are. Flame, a flame of fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let go of fear. Let go of doubt. Let go of inconsistency. Letting go of anything that doesn't line up with your word and your will. Father, we're letting go of it right now. We're letting go of it. We're letting go of apathy. Ah, letting go of addictions. Oh, my God. Letting go, Father, of backbiting. Hey. Ah, forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. Not for them, but for you. Forgive them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turn it up for me. Turn it up for me. Hallelujah. I charge this atmosphere with your glory, God. I charge this atmosphere with your glory, God. Ah, more of your presence. More of your presence, God. More of your presence. More of your anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, may they continue to fight the good fight of faith. May they continue to fight the good fight of faith, God. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your holy name. That's it, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. Let it go. 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 Don't be afraid to trust the Father in this next phase of your life. Don't be afraid to touch him wholeheartedly. Trust him wholeheartedly. Touch him wholeheartedly. And trust him wholeheartedly. Hey! Fire at this altar. Fire. Fire. No more fear of stepping out. No more fear of the unknown. No more fear. You will be who God has called you to be here and through these airwaves. You will be. You will be. It has not yet appeared what you will be. It has not yet appeared, but it will happen. It will. Hey! Rush. Rush, Father. Hey! Hallelujah. Deal with your people, Lord. Deal with your people, Father. Deal with your people, Father. I'm letting go of fear. I'm letting go of timidity. I'm letting go of promiscuity. I'm letting go of alcoholism. I'm letting go! Let go, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. It'll kill you if you let it grow. <laughs> let go. It will kill you if you let it grow. Don't let it grow. Don't let it grow. Don't let it grow. Don't let it harbor. Don't let it fester. Press, press. This is the place right here. This is the place of pressing. This is the place of pressing.
Jesus name I break off of my brother I break off of my sister anything that doesn't line up with your word or your will Father you see the heart cry and you know what they're dealing with right now so I come against anything that will hinder them from moving forward in the things of you I declare right now, Father, that here and through these airways that your people, Father, will see a new level of understanding, that will experience a new level of freedom, and that the weight of responsibility is being rolled from off of their shoulders right now. God, I honor you for it. I bless you for it. Father, yes, they've been talking about. Yes, they've been, yes, they've been uh, betrayed. Yes, they've been going through hardships and difficulties. Father, but your word declares that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Glory to your name, Lord. Hey! Hey! Father, it's the morning. It's the morning by faith. It's the morning in our lives by faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love y'all on social media. God's blessings over you. Let the 